So I selected some recipes. I marked down what days I wanted to have them. I made sure I had the ingredients for them. And then I decided, what do I want to cook today? What's up, fertility babe? Let's get these babies, ladies. What's up, Fertility Fam? How are you? All right, today we're gonna do some meal prep, some recipes from our book. It starts with the Egg Fertility Cookbook. <sighs> I did, first of all, I did some planning. So if you're going to do any meal prep, I definitely recommend you figure out which recipes you're going to use and make sure you have all the ingredients. I do not like soggy vegetables, so I don't meal prep my vegetables. I tried it before. It just, because I like to steam my vegetables to help them retain, you know, as much nutrient value as possible or nutritional value or retain their nutrients. You know what I'm saying. So sometimes I find it gets a little bit soggy. That's first and foremost. So think about what it is, like what your tendencies are, preferences are. Like if you don't mind having spinach that was cooked on Sunday, eating that on Thursday, then by all means meal prep that. Just think about your plan ahead of time before you actually get in the kitchen. So I selected some recipes. I marked down what days I wanted to have them. I made sure I had the ingredients for them. And then I decided, what do I want to cook today on my meal prep day? And I have decided I'm going to boil eggs. Boiled eggs have come in clutch for me um, since I started this anti-inflammatory Mediterranean diet. For those of you guys who have been following me on my FET journey, you know that I'm taking a corticosteroid as part of my protocol. It's prednisone. I take 10 milligrams in the morning, 10 milligrams in the evening, although I'm moving the evening one to the afternoon because it has been impacting my ability to fall asleep. Because I'm taking the prednisone, it does not sit well on an empty stomach, so I'm finding that the boiled egg in the morning, it's got protein, it's got fat, it's a good way for me to start my day. So I am going to boil seven eggs so that I have one for each day. I like the soft boiled egg, so I might do, I think I'm gonna soft boil all of them, actually I'm gonna soft boil, so it's like a six minute egg. So I'm definitely boiling eggs. I'm also gonna do a three bean chili. I'm gonna put it in the crock pot. I'm going to use turkey meat, so I'm going to be frying up turkey meat, ground turkey, and then chicken breast is easy. I got six, I think it's, it's five or six, I haven't opened up the pack yet, uh, chicken breast, so I'm going to bake those. And I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do a light marinade on them, bake them. I like baking them because I find that they're a little bit juicier when they're baked, and then I can just store them in the fridge that way. If I were only doing two at a time, I would grill them on top. It's, the, the thing with the grilling on there is like, it is juicy when you first cook it, like if you eat it day one, but I find it gets a little bit tough. I'm just gonna show you the pan that I do it in. So when I say grill, I'm grilling it on the stove top in this pan that has the grill marks on it. I just find it gets a little bit tough the second day. So that's just what I've experienced, trial and error. You know, obviously you'll experiment at home with what works for you. Okay, so let me just go through the recipes that we have planned. Where did I mark these out? Okay, so we are going to have, and I'm gonna brine the chicken because there is one recipe that calls for the brine chicken, so I'm gonna brine all of it and bake it in the oven. So today is Sunday when I'm filming this. I'm gonna do cod. There's a recipe for cod fish in here, so I'm gonna cook the cod two pieces tonight that I have. I'll have one for dinner, and then I'll have one for tomorrow at lunch, and I have to kind of think about, like, where am I? during the week. I'm going to be home Monday, Thursday, Friday. I have to go in the work into the office this week, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I definitely want to have a meal planned for Tuesday, Wednesday because I don't want to be scrambling when I go into the office. So here's how I've done it. So I'll have the cod tonight. I'll have it for lunch at home tomorrow. Then I am having chipotle bowl on Monday night. That'll be a chipotle chicken bowl. So I've got black beans. I have some that are already prepped and I already have my brown rice prepped. I did that I think on Friday. So I've got that in the container in the refrigerator. So I'm good to go on brown rice. On Tuesday, I'll have a chicken alfredo. It's a non-dairy alfredo. That's a recipe that's in this book. I'm really excited to try that out. Wednesday, I'll have jerk chicken. There's a recipe in here for the jerk chicken. And then that's gonna actually be with chicken thighs. So those thighs are coming tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll prep thighs. Tonight I'm just doing chicken breast. I'm going to have on Thursday a sardine salad. I think I'm gonna do that for lunch on Thursday. Anything fish related, because that's Thursday, I'm not cooking that. 
that or prepping that salad tonight. The fish that I'm cooking today, I'm eating today and tomorrow. Same thing when I do my salmon. I just don't like fish hanging out too long in the refrigerator and having it prepared on Sunday for Thursday just kind of creeps me out a little bit because then I just feel like it's going to be super fishy and salmon. All of these are already like kind of fishy. You know what I mean? They're fatty fish so they have a stronger fish taste and texture and flavor. Why are they super fatty? Because we're doing a non-inflammatory diet which means we are trying to increase our omega-3s, decrease our omega-6s so we'll cook with a lot of oils that are healthy fats so like olive oil, avocado oil. You want to stay away from like corn oil or other like vegetable highly processed oils because they're higher in omega-6s and that brings up your inflammation in your body. Thursday for dinner I'm having the three bean chili which we are going to make that today. I'm going to let it soak. I'm going to put that in the crock pot just because I want the beans to be like nice and soft. I don't want to have any backlash. You know beans can go wrong real fast in the GI tract. So I want to make sure they are soaked and nice and soft. I did get them in the non-BPA cans and so those are you know they're free of those toxins. Friday night we're having salmon for dinner and we'll also have the salmon Saturday for lunch. Again, I will cook that on Friday. And I'm, I'm home on Friday so that'll be easy to do. You gotta think ahead. So I can do it in the afternoon. Saturday lunch is the salmon. Saturday dinner will be lemon garlic shrimp. So I got that pack of shrimp in the other grocery haul. I've got lemon juice in there. I've got garlic in there. Lemon is a good anti-inflammatory. Garlic is a good anti-inflammatory. So we're just gonna chop full of that goodness. For Sunday, a shrimp cauliflower rice. That won't be super easy. I already have the cauliflower rice. I got it in a package of, uh, it's one of the recipes they don't, I mean, you can make your cauliflower rice from scratch, but I was able to find one that already had the stuff chopped up in it, so why not use that? Let's get started then. We've gone through all of those things. I'm going to boil the eggs. I am going to get the crock pot out, and then we are going to look at the cod recipe. It's breaded cod, so I want to get all of the ingredients out. Obviously, doing the turkey meat is easy, right? Just putting that on the stove and boiling the eggs is easy. So that will just be happening in the background while we get the cod going and while we get the chicken brine going, okay? And the secret to eggs, if you've boiled, if you've done deviled eggs, you already know this, right? But you want to give it a cold bath, the eggs a cold bath after you take them off. You want to immediately take them off of the heat, off of the iron, because it's still hot, and then you put them in a bowl of of cold water with ice. I'm gonna use this, you know what, that's, it's gonna make a lot of noise. Let me get everything out and prepped and then we'll talk about it when we get it out, okay? Whew, let me finish my thoughts here. Deviled eggs, I mentioned deviled eggs. If you've made deviled eggs, you already know that you need to do a cold bath on your eggs afterwards. Why? Because it helps separate the shell from the skin. If you've ever not done that. You know if you have a hard boiled egg and you start pulling the shell off, the skin will come off clumpy, but you can't do that with double eggs, right? You need to perfectly cut in half. You need to be able to cut it in half and have a perfectly beautiful shell and be able to scoop out the inside of your hard boiled egg so that you can make it into a doubled egg. And so that's basically what you're doing. It just makes it nice and beautiful. If you don't have time for a nice cold bath, a water bath afterward, totally fine. But for this, I'm doing my seven eggs. I already turned the water on. As soon as it boils, I'll drop those seven eggs in. I'll set a timer for seven minutes. And after the seven minutes, I will scoop it out of the hot water and put it into that, can you guys see it, the glass bowl over here and let them cool off and they can just chill and hang out for a while. I did get the beans out of the pantry. Here are, see it's non-BPA lining. Three beans, I have two cans. I'm gonna put those in the crock pot, which is here. I'm gonna chop up some garlic and onion to put in there with them. And then I'm gonna do the ground turkey meat. I'm gonna just fry that up on the stove. Let's do that first before we get into the cod. I have my cutting board out. I have these little liners for my cutting board. This one is for vegetables. I don't know if you can see that. Just, I think for me it helps the wood last longer and I don't have to worry about things absorbing into the wood. It's right all on here. Potato, potato, whatever you do in your house is rah, rah, I'm here for you. The ground turkey, I'm going to fry in the cast iron skillet. The iron will transfer into the meat just to help infuse all that irony goodness in there. It doesn't change the taste. It's just healthier for you. I'm going to use avocado oil, zero trans fat. This is one of our healthy fats. You can also use olive oil. Olive oil has a, this has a higher smoke point, right? Olive oil is going to smoke at a lower heat. It just 
it can get in an apartment it, it can be a lot so i'm gonna use the avocado oil and put some seasonings on there i actually have it's like a taco technically a taco seasoning i'm gonna mix that in and put it on the stove i'm also gonna put a little bit of garlic and onion in the pan first before i add the turkey meat just so it all is kind of cohesive so garlic and onion in the pan garlic and onion in the crock pot and actually I might saute it all in the pan first and put the sauteed, I think, yeah, put the sauteed onion and sauteed garlic into the crock pot. Okay, I hear the water boiling, so I'm gonna put my eggs in. I'm gonna use the pasta spoon. I'm always worried about dropping the egg in and having it crack. So don't make fun of me, this is just what I do. I put it in a pasta spoon, which is this, or one of these guys. Set a timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes, and that's starting now. And even after all that carefulness, I still cracked one egg. Okay, let me get going on chopping up the garlic and the onion. the onion and garlic on the I'm gonna start seasoning the ground turkey so that I can drop it into the pan I got the 93% lean 21 grams of protein per servings no added hormones or steroids I also already washed my chicken and now it is soaking over here in a solution of water lemon juice and salt we'll prepare the brine next after we get our turkey meat going I also want to say, in order to prep for your meal prep, the prep before the prep, you want to make sure you have containers that you can store all of your food in once you're done, whatever that looks like. I know some people do individual meals. I am not going to do individual, like in the, in the bowl with like the protein, the fiber, the veggies or whatever. I am going to stack like all my chicken breasts in one container and then also with the, um, with the chili. Like ultimately the chili is going to go in here which is where the chicken is now so that's going to go in the fridge it is plastic i am not going to reheat anything in the plastic so i try as much as i can to use glass to reheat everything and some of my stuff i store in glass because that's non-toxic the plastic gets toxic once you heat it in the microwave and it starts leaching toxins into your food so as long as you store it in there and don't cook in there you should be okay but um glass is heavier it's more expensive like all my containers are not glass so i do what i can there but that just also just kind of like think about where you're storing the food and obviously clean your fridge. I did find I had chili powder. I forgot. Or maybe I just ordered this. Um, I did. I did just order that because the thing is still on there. So I'm going to do chili powder since we're making chili instead of the taco seasoning that I was going to use. And then I'm enjoying this Bragg Organic Sprinkle 24 Herbs and Spices. I've been putting it in everything. It's super yummy. I'm going to do pink Himalayan sea salt and I'm going to do the black pepper on my ground turkey. And of course you can always add it in the pan. I just like to get it mixed in before I put it in there and then I'm gonna crumble it all up. Let's put this over. gonna put a lot a lot a lot it has the little lift to pour we're we gonna pour this on here yes okay let me start the onions and garlic I'm gonna move some of the onion and garlic into the crock pot And 
I just mush it all together. I just want to make sure everything is incorporated together. And of course you can use ground beef, ground turkey, whatever, whatever floats your boat. This was lower calories since I am up in my oils to get my omega-3 imbalance. Okay, so that is browning. You want to stir that often. I just lay it all out in the bottom of the pan and then let that get brown and then, you know, turn it over, mix it up and start again. I'm going to put the three beans into the crock pot. I'm going to plug the crock pot. Well, I'm going to turn it on. It's already plugged in. I'm going to do it for four hours. And also, if this is your first time meal prepping, meal planning, definitely clean as you go. Like once that pot that I did the eggs in cools off, I will wash that and put it away. Just so, because you're cooking for, you know, a couple meals. We don't want to have a couple meals worth of dishes when it's all said and done. So I'm just going to dump these into the crock pot. And this, I'm looking at the can. This will be seven servings of the chili. I'm also going to add chili powder into the beans and I'm going to add this bone broth. This is chicken, beef, and turkey. This is the sipping bone broth. So it's high in collagen, good for your gut health. And I just eyeball it. I don't measure it out. I put it up just so the beans are not fully submerged in the liquid. It already had liquid from the can, obviously, so I just put a little bit in there. And that is good sipping broth, so I can, you know, heat up a cup every now and again. Also adding a little cayenne pepper to the chili. All right, brined chicken. The recipe for brining the chicken is on page 87. This says perfect brined roast chicken breast for salads. Again, I'm gonna use it for salads. And in a pinch, I can have a chicken breast, steam some vegetables, and I already have the brown rice to just make sure I stay on track. So this is for three large chicken breasts. I have five, so I'm gonna eyeball some of this and just, it'll be a little bit more. So one and a half cup of boiling water, two cups of ice water, three large chicken breasts, two tablespoons of salt. So let's get salt, rosemary, thyme is what we need. All right. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I have basil, so I'm gonna use basil and I have the rosemary. So combine the salt, rosemary, and thyme in the boiling water. In a large glass bowl, mix the salt solution with the ice water. Okay. Water. Almost forgot to tell you guys, I have a little thing of tomato paste. I'm gonna put that in with the ground turkey. It's already done, so I'm just gonna add this. You can also add it before when you do the garlic and onion. I just like to be able to see the meat is browning and sometimes it gets hard when you put the paste in before. All right, we're gonna compare, we're gonna combine salt, rosemary, and thyme, we're using basil, into that boiling water. I'm gonna go ahead and put two tablespoons of the rosemary because it calls for a rush, fresh rosemary and I'm using dried, which dried is usually not as potent as the fresh. Okay, we'll do some basil. It is not quite boiling. And I think what I'm going to do, because I have more than two cups in there, I'm going to just pour it into the mixing, into the Pyrex. Ooh, okay, I turned the heat off on the turkey meat. It's in the cast iron skillet, so obviously the skillet is so hot. I'm just going to let it finish for a second. Get the sauce and the seasonings marinated before I dump it into the crock pot. Okay, let me just read through. Okay, so we have our one cup of boiling water. I'm gonna mix in the salt mixture. Get our brine. Stir it all together. That is gonna go in here. Ooh, that salt did not dissolve yet. Let me just stir that up a little bit more. It smells good. 
It's very aromatic. This should help keep it nice and juicy. Cause you know, chicken breast doesn't have as much fat as like a thigh or a leg. And so it can get dry, especially if you cook it and then it sits in the fridge. I'm trying to do all I can to help it out. And I have romaine lettuce. So this will definitely go in some salads as well as my chipotle chicken bowl. I'm gonna add more seasoning to the one that I do for the chipotle bowl. Okay, and then here's the two cups of the ice water, which technically I'm gonna need three cups, right? But this only holds two, so we'll we'll come back. It's gonna go over all the chicken. I'm gonna put it in this glass container, and then it's gonna go in the fridge to sit for, it says up to three. Actually, it says two to 12 hours, but if you're doing more than three, you use a different amount of salt. So I'm gonna do it for no more than three. While this is soaking, I'll do the, I'll start the cod. I'm gonna put the chicken breast in. Again, my chicken breast has been sitting in lemon water and salt, so that's just like a little tenderizer. And there were, there ended up being four in that pack. They were individually wrapped too, so if you do buy that chicken from the Amazon brand, the 365, if you're a single person and you're worried about like freezer burn, they were all individually packed inside of the thing. Look to be, what is that, that double pack, you know, where it lasts in the freezer longer. I'm gonna pour the brine on first. This smells so good, you guys. Oh my God, the rosemary. Whew. If you have fresh rosemary, that would probably be even more aromatic, but this smells delicious. Here's our two cups of ice water. Let me get one more, just cold. Because the recipe was for three. Oh, I didn't have five, I had four. It's okay. <laughs> It's fine. I almost want to put some vinegar on here. I'm gonna follow the direction. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the fridge. I'm gonna put the turkey chill, the turkey meat into the crock pot. I'll be right back. washed the dishes from what we had already and I brought out everything for the cod. Um, I had to get some more salt out of the cabinet. So let me just run down what the ingredients are and then we'll um, put this all together. I have the wild caught cod here. We need half a cup of gluten-free breadcrumbs. I'm using the panko Italian style breadcrumb. I have the half a cup in here. Three tablespoons of avocado, safflower, or light olive oil. I have avocado oil, so we'll do three tablespoons. They also want the cookie, the baking sheet grease. So I put my silicone pad down. I don't want to get my pans oily, dirty. So I'm gonna put the oil on the silicone pad and then we'll put the fish on top of that. So I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna spray it just in the middle where the fish is gonna go. Paper towel and rub it. This does not have the chemical in it. Press it out because that chemical is not good for you. So it's sometimes spray, sometimes it drips. Today I decided to drip, that's okay. I'm just gonna spread it around. Then I have onion powder because we're gonna need half a teaspoon of onion powder. So we're gonna need a quarter teaspoon of salt, two portions of cod, haddock, or other white fish. We have cod. This is New England baked cod that we're making. And it also says you can add for additional flavor, parsley, garlic, dill, lemon pepper, Old Bay, or whatever. I'm gonna add turmeric and of course pepper because turmeric activates with pepper another little anti-inflammatory piece. lightly grease a rimmed baking sheet with oil so I did that combine the breadcrumbs oil breadcrumbs are gonna go in the bowl oil oh I forgot to mention for heating oven it has now reached 400 degrees Fahrenheit three tablespoons of avocado oil you know, in that chicken, we never did add oil. It didn't have, it had olive oil in the, or olive oil or avocado oil in the like ingredient list, but I don't remember. We'll have to go back and look at that. Anyway, onion powder, half a teaspoon. I'm gonna pour it over another bowl just in case I pour too much so I don't spill it accidentally in my mixture. That was our half a teaspoon of the onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and this food's alive. I can't say it enough, food's alive, food's alive. I love them. A quarter teaspoon of salt. This is Himalayan pink salt, fine ground. So mix that together. I wanna put the turmeric in there. I do need to order more regular pepper. And then we're gonna stir that up. And I just wanna make it so that the breadcrumbs have the oil on there. Place the fish on the baking sheet and top with the breadcrumbs. And these are four pieces of the cod. 
put a little bit of oil on top of the cod. <laughs> Julia Childs, I am not, okay. Can you guys see that? At least let me be able to zoom in when I edit, girl. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on here just to help this mixture stick. Can you guys hear Justin's acting a fool? Trying to get out of that room. That was too much of this right up here. I'm gonna push them all together so I can just layer this on top. Just add a little more turmeric. Okay, and then the directions say to bake that in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes until the fish is cooked through. So I'm gonna start with 12 minutes and I'll do a little toothpick poke. I am having the cod, like I said, tonight for dinner and then I'm also gonna have it again tomorrow for lunch. I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some kale on the stove top. I gotta debane it all. Last time I didn't debane it, I didn't enjoy it as much. So I'm gonna do the kale. So we'll have kale for tonight and tomorrow and I already have the brown rice in. So we're good to go for dinner tonight, lunch tomorrow. What do we say for tomorrow night's dinner? It's the chicken Alfredo. So let me take a look at the Alfredo sauce. Maybe I'll do the sauce tonight. No, tomorrow is the Chipotle. I'm mixing these up. Tuesday night is the chicken Alfredo. T tomorrow night is the Chipotle chicken bowl. So let me just take a look and see if there's anything I can prep. I'm also gonna make myself a little sandwich with my, the last of the sandwich thins because I'm a little hungry. I need to take my other Arnazone pill. I'm making my little snack and I thought I just should talk about this mayonnaise that I'm using. It is avocado oil mayonnaise. Sir Kensington's and there's no sugar in there if you're looking for some alternatives or some other ways to get more avocado in your diet and then also I want to tell you about the stashers I moved the eggs out of the bowl so I could wipe the bowl and I put them there's water in here I put them in the stasher so they could continue cooling I will take the shell off eventually the stashers are bomb.com because you can actually put these in the microwave you can put them in a boiling pot of water they sustain heat they can go in the freezer they can go in the fridge so I know they're a little pricier than like a ziploc they'll last forever and you can can't boil a Ziploc and you can put some in the freezer but those are the freezer bags versus the other do it all I love my stashers I'll put a link down below I got them off of Amazon yeah I just took this out it looks yummy I'm just gonna put a toothpick in the center that is still pretty wet I'm gonna just put it back in for five more minutes it smells so good you guys all right it's ready I'm just gonna scoop it out and put it in this little dish. This is actually a Ziploc dish. It is a glass dish. It's got a, um, there you can see the top. It has that on there. I'm gonna stack them in there. And I don't wanna waste any of these breadcrumbs. It smells so good, I'm excited. And then I'm gonna let that cool off for a second before I put the lid on. And then I'll just stick the cookie sheet back in the oven so it's out of the way. That cod smells um I'm gonna chop up the kale and then I am gonna do the Alfredo sauce. It is a dairy-free sauce. I'll do that tonight. It's got a head of cauliflower, which I'm gonna use cauliflower that I have frozen. Eight garlic cloves, two teaspoons of salt, olive oil, non-dairy milk or low sodium chicken broth. I think I'm going to use, well, let's see. Maybe I'll use the macadamia nut milk, like half macadamia nut milk. It's only half a cup. Yeah, so maybe I'll do a quarter cup of the macadamia nut milk and a quarter cup of the broth. There's also half a teaspoon of black pepper, but let's just clean out the stalk of this. I'm gonna saute this kale. It's a week old, so there are some yellow spots that I need to pick out. I do like the fresh kale over the frozen, I will say that. So I, I got two bunches I should, probably should have made earlier. It's not bad, it's, you know, it's just not as ideal as it was when it first came home. So I'm just gonna saute these in a regular cast iron pan. It's just like a regular, I don't even know. It's not a non-stick pan. It's just like a regular aluminum, I don't know what I'm saying. A regular frying pan. So I just am taking this out, just like how you would do collard greens. The stock up toward the leafy part is not as bad, I find, but the bottom part is down here. It doesn't taste so great. To me, if you like it, as my mama would say, honey, I love it. You, you do what makes sense for you. So let me get that pan going. There's that cod if you want to see it from here. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my God, he's so excited. 
Kale is nice and hearty, which I like. I like spinach. But you know, spinach can get a little wimpy. Don't tell Popeye. <laughs> if you over saute some spinach, it will definitely let you know. Oh, you know what? I should put some garlic in the pan. Just do a quick garlic press. And we'll leave this garlic out because we're gonna need it. Eight cloves for our Alfredo sauce. I'm just gonna put two. Do you guys like garlic press? You use a garlic press? This little, oh, it's just came out of the dishwasher. This little guy where you put it in there, it, you don't have to peel the garlic. Clutch! Now put water in your oil. So we put that one there, so it's the grease does not pop everywhere. I just ran the dishwasher. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on it. If I get a little steam action going, we'll just let that cook down. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cauliflower on the stove. Frozen cauliflower. It is frozen. garlic and salt in a pot and cover with water. So we need the eight garlic cloves. and it just stuck. Her, she just lost her brother. We uh, buried him yesterday. Oh, his home going was in Atlanta. His name is Lamar. I was gonna say was, but it's still his name, right? So Alfredo must not be from Northern Italy because Northern Italy is not a fan of a lot of garlic. I need to get back to Italy. Last time I was there was 2016. With my mom and my sister. It was our uh, 10 year anniversary of our surgery. My sister and I. I wasn't YouTubing yet. We had our 15 year anniversary last year, which I did vlog in Hawaii. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, eight cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of salt. And it just says cover with water, bring to a boil. And we'll bring that to a boil. Okay, that is the kale. Uh oh, it's wet right there. It's cooking down nicely, which I'm a fan of. And we're gonna get the cauliflower. I was gonna say broccoli. Broccoli wanted to come out. We're gonna get the cauliflower nice and tender. And then the sauce, we're gonna make it right in that pot. I'm just gonna use the emulsion mixer to do that. I'll be back. In the meantime, I'm gonna go enjoy my little snack. I got my thins with turkey and lettuce, the romaine lettuce, a little bit of that mayo that I showed you with the avocado oil and mustard. And then I have some cherries and I have some grapes. So I'm gonna sit it on down, wait for this cauliflower to start becoming tender. And actually, I'm gonna turn the fire down or turn it off on the kale. So let it just cook down with the heat that it has. 
we're making good progress, you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. You're motivated me to move and groove, so this is good. Hopefully you get some recipes from this. Let me know if you got the book. I got this from Target, but I'm sure they have it on Amazon. Let me know if you got it, what you tried, what you like, what you think. You can tag me in some of your recipes or your food photos on Instagram because I want to see what you did. Here's the finished kale. I'm going to put it in this container. All right, it all fit. This is almost cool enough to go in the fridge. And our cauliflower. I keep wanting to say broccoli. Cauliflower is, is boiling. All right, we have passed our three hour mark. So I'm turning off, turning off the chili. I tasted it, it tastes pretty yum. I am going to take the chicken out. Where do we do the Alfredo? Boiling like I just showed you guys. I was supposed to boil it covered. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I turned off the boil. Let's get the chicken in because that brine, it's brined. And I looked at the directions again and it does say you can grill or bake. So I'm going to grill two, I'm going to bake two. Just so I have a mix. They should be tender after the brining. That pan has got to heat up and the oven, it says to do at 425. So the preheat is still going. So I have to drain the cauliflower and garlic, transfer to a blender or food processor, add the non-dairy milk. I'm going to put it back in that pot so that I can, just so I can use the emulsion, because the thing that I have to blend in is plastic and you're not supposed to put, uh, you know, we talked about this. No heat in the plastic, because the plastic will leach. It even says that if your blender container is plastic, it is best to cook the cauliflower in advance and allow it to cool first. So we're just gonna keep it in the pot after I strain off the waters. Same thing for your colander. Try not to use plastic if at all possible. Heat. Okay. Good Drain that off. Blend for several minutes. So here is the emulsion blender. It's just a Cuisinart smart stick. I'm gonna stick it in there. It's good for sauces. I highly recommend if you don't have one. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. I'll link it just in case in the description box. I'm gonna add the non-dairy milk, remaining tablespoon of olive oil, and pepper. So half a cup of pepper. Oh my God. Imagine half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna do the macadamia nut milk. nutritional yeast to this nutritional yeast is used in a lot of vegan things it has like a cheesy flavor without the dairy yes it's cheesy savory seasoning without the dairy good source of protein it's also brag stop okay chicken let's get the chicken oh and i figured out the oil then add the oil to your cooking pan if you're gonna bake it i'm gonna put foil on the bottom just easier to clean and i already have the cast iron skillet it's been heating up i'm gonna put the olive oil at the bottom just drain off the excess I forgot to take my cookie sheet out. Oh my god. I normally always double check those breadcrumbs. I thought I smelled something. <laughs> but luckily it's on that silicone sheet so that will rinse right off. If you have cast iron, I highly recommend these little silicone covers for the handle. I have burned my hand more than once forgetting to put these on. <laughs> And then the bottom just pops off for easy cleaning. Okay, so there's our uh, Alfredo sauce. I'm gonna put it in a mason jar. I got the little, or it's a ball jar. Same difference.
good. Definitely glad I added the nutritional yeast. I'm just gonna have to cut the garlic for sure, for sure. Probably should have let this cool. I don't know why I'm in such a rush. This will go in the fridge after it gets cooled off. I'm running out of steam on my clean as you go. Some of those might get done after dinner or in the morning because I'm working from home. I'll, I'll clean up as much as I can. There's something about waking up to clean dishes, right? Or getting up really early and cleaning the kitchen. So the chicken we're gonna finish both in the oven and on the stove top and then that will be it for our meal prep. For now, we'll do a little more in the middle of the week, of course, I'll have you here with me motivating me right along we'll get into the rest the later parts of our week like when we do the salmon the sardine salad i want to share that with you because that reminds me of grandma what else do we have going on the lemon garlic shrimp which is going to be super easy so i definitely want to share that with you it's not necessarily we don't need to do it in advance because nobody wants day oh shrimp sis i think it's going to be tasty and it's super easy and it's on the mediterranean diet so it's something you can incorporate fairly easily the shrimp is not that expensive right now of course you could also do like lemon garlic chicken if you if the shrimp is out of your price range or if it's not available where you are you can mix it up with other stuff it's, it'll still be good i'm gonna go sit down because i'm actually editing another video i will come back when this is cooked so you can see what it looks like so i'll wash this out so when the chicken is done it can go in that container I also got these little glass balls on Amazon and I take them well you guys saw I had the chia pudding in here I take them to work to put my like breakfast stuff in there all right I'll be back dish that they were the chicken breasts were brining in and when they're all done I'll let them rest in that glass bowl that chicken breast is so tender oh my god I think I might instead of cod for lunch tomorrow I might have a Caesar a chicken Caesar maybe do the cod for dinner or I guess I could have this well there will be a chicken Caesar hat tomorrow there will be cod hat tomorrow and if you haven't had cod at home or you're not sure if you might like cod, if you like filet of fish, filet of fish is made out of cod. So, not saying what you're making at home is like filet of fish. That breading, sis, it's gonna be good. Put your little tartar sauce on there. They have a tartar sauce recipe in the book too. I'm not planning on making it. I was, I was about to say definitively I'm not making it, but I might look at it, I might make some. But anyway, I um, so tonight we'll have the cod, we'll have the brown rice, and we'll have the kale. And then at some point tomorrow, we'll have brown rice and cod, and I might do broccoli heads. We'll see. We have options, we have options. And you know what, I just realized in the directions it said to pat that chicken dry before you grill it or before you, I did not pat it dry, so. Do as I say, not as I do. That is resting. I'm gonna give the chicken in the oven about seven more minutes. Once the chili cools off, I'll put it in, a, in the container and that will go in the fridge. It is 6.10, pretty good. In 20 minutes, I gotta start lidocaining myself for my shot. <laughs> and my PM medication, but yeah, we did a good job. Yay, us. Okay, I will show you pictures of everything. Roll the food porn.
hanging out with me. I love you. Remember to do all the YouTube things. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what was your favorite. What are you interested in? Have you got the cookbook? Let me know down below. Remember to hit the thumbs up. Cost you nothing. Helps me out tremendously. Let's the YouTube universe know, hey, she's making good content. People like it. And yeah, I will see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye. Mm. <sighs> Baby does to us all. Thank you.